What is up guys, this is Tim Ty here today, welcome back to another World War II Zombies video, now before I start the video, smash the like button down below if you do enjoy this video, and subscribe if you are new, but anyway, let's get right into today's video, and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys my overall review of the final Reich, and expressing my opinions on it. I have over a day played in Zombies, and I attempted the Easter Egg many times, went for high rounds, and did a couple of challenges, I have played World War II Zombies for quite a fair bit of time and I'm just going to discuss some pros and cons so let's start with the pros first pros is that it's a decent sized map at first when you play the map it might seem like a really huge map but once you get to play it a lot it's not really that huge in my opinion but it's a pretty decent sized map you can get lost while playing the map at first but once you get used to the map, it really isn't that bad. The casual Easter egg is the Rise and Drop difficulty for me, meaning it has a balance between hard and easy. Like the Rise and Drop Easter egg was pretty easy up until the boss fight. The boss fight can be pretty tough. And that's the same thing with the casual Easter egg in the final rag. I don't know about the hardcore Easter egg since I haven't really went for that yet. But I like how there's a casual Easter egg and a hardcore Easter egg. The casual Easter egg is pretty much for beginners that are starting out with Easter eggs. And the hardcore Easter egg is more, you know, harder than the casual Easter egg. And that's for, you know, the hardcore Easter egg grinders. I don't know. It's just I really like the casual Easter egg. How it's the same difficulty as the Derice and Drake Easter egg for me. But yeah, and I really love the Tesla gun and all its variants. Even though the Tesla gun can be seen as a wave gun copy, you know, the wave gun from Moon, I still love the Tesla gun and all its variants. My favorite variant is the Midnight. The Midnight Tesla gun variant is pretty good and it's really easy to upgrade as well. And I really love how you can rebuy ammo for all guns, excluding the Tesla gun, with the pack a punch machine. In past Zombies modes, a lot of people, you know, worry about pack a punching weapons from the box. Because, like, you can't, like, you gotta worry about ammo, and, like, if it's not a wall buy on the map, like, it's gonna be really hard to get ammo for that weapon. Like, you get what I'm saying, like, you get a box weapon, and, like, if you run out of ammo, you're kind of shit out of luck. However, like, even even if you get, like, the Pack-A-Punch 1911s, the Pack-A-Punch starting pistols, you can just rebuy ammo whenever. It just, it just costs only 4,000 jolts, or 4,000 points. And I really, really love that system, honestly. One of the things Sledgehammer did better than Treyarch, if I gotta be completely honest. And now the unlockable characters in the game make the map more replayable. It adds replayability to the map. And I really hope they add more characters in the DLC. Like, the challenges for some of the characters in order to unlock some of the characters are ridiculous it makes you like play one or two zombies the final right rest and host whatever map it is it makes you play that map like a lot like some of the challenges aren't incredibly insane i'm not going to go too in depth into it but it just adds replayability to the maps which i can really really appreciate i like how they try adding replayability to the maps but there are some cons Boss zombies spawn in every second, seems like, making high rounds tedious. I get, like, they added those boss zombies into the game to add a challenge, but when you have, like, five wrestling zombies spawning in at once, it can kind of be tough. And the armor feature. Jug is in the game, there's this armor feature, and whenever you run out of armor, you gotta keep rebuying it, which I, I really don't like. I really don't like the armor feature. And I have a love-hate relationship with the way you get perks. I love the animation when you buy the perks, but with how some perks are placed in the map, you can get down while trying to get a perk. I mean, this problem exists in other Call of Duty Zombies modes, but this is the only time I really worry about buying a perk when there's a full round of zombies. Like, I always gotta make sure I pop in my camouflage special ability, or make sure that it's the end of the round in order to buy a perk, because I literally died like twice in a row trying to rebuy Quick Revive, and I don't know, it's just, it seems like more of a hassle this time around, and I don't really like that. Like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with the perk system. But overall, I think the final Reich is a 9 out of 10. I might be still in the hype, but in my opinion, this is the best non-Treyarch Zombies mode we have gone. I like how it's dark and gritty, and all the Mr. Wesling can be a nuisance when going for high rounds. 
I just really like the final rank, and I'm super hyped for the DLC season for World War II Zombies. But yeah, but that's going to be it for today's video. My overall review slash opinions on the final rank of World War II Zombies thus far. Comment down what's your opinions on World War II Zombies in the final rank. Do you love it? Do you hate it? I really want to hear your opinions in the comment section down below, but my name is Tim Tai here. Hope you guys have a wonderful day to keep those positive vibes flowing. Leave a like if you did enjoy today's video, and subscribe if you are new. But I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.